Hey boys, welcome back to the channel. We had some, some tough luck with our cooling system over the last month, and I wanted to share some great news. We've knocked out our issue. Albeit, I, I'm not 100% sure on which one of the things that we did in the last video. If you guys haven't seen it, go back and watch the last episode. We go through and we change some components, a couple of sensors, we do a cooling system flush, and we add some water wetter, change the thermostat, a few, a few things here and there. This car is still equipped with AC, Obviously, you're going to want to turn the AC on. It was about 94 or 95 degrees out for a few days, and I was driving up to my day job, and I was watching the cooling temps start to climb. The car would sit between like 196, 197, and, and 206, and that's where it would go. It hit 206, the fans would kick on, bring it back down to like 196 or so, and that was, that was great. That was life. Well, I learned this summer on a really hot day that when the fans kick on and it's 206, and it's 95 degrees outside and the AC's running, trying to, you know, combat everything, a hot AC evaporator, hot radiator, and the fans are just working, working, working. Cooling system just was not up for the task. You can see right here in this log, we hit 213 on this day and the temps would climb. They would go 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. The check engine light would come on and it just kept going. And I shut the AC off and was forced to turn the heat on in the car to get these cooling temps back under control you put a 170 thermostat instead of a 180 in if you go in here to the uh, ecu config logs my uh, coolant cell is set at 219 so it's kind of like a heads up makes a loud chime and then i see the light flash and you know, i know that i'm getting warm just so i don't have to drive around with a laptop in the car all the time but anyways putting that thermostat in doing the flush we have we have definitely got these temps under control now you can see we start out at 180 and Climbs up to 186, 190, and it hovers in that area. And the highest temp that I saw on the last day where it was really, really hot out, I think it was 94 degrees out, I had the AC on the whole drive. We were at 203 at the top, and that was driving at highway speeds and stop and go traffic, and it likes to be around 193 to 196 now. 203 is like if you're ripping to get on the interstate, it gets a little warm for a second, but then it goes right back down. Uh, it's pretty late, but we're gonna start tearing things apart. I got some more new parts in. I picked up some stuff that I'm gonna link on eBay. Uh, it's gonna be in the description. You guys can pick them up if you want to. Also, we needed to pick ourselves up a fan shroud. So we got one, finally. I've wanted to get a fan shroud for such a long time, and I just don't have one. I haven't used one. And I know that this will maximize the, uh, the efficiency of the radiator core that we're using. Came with a pack of uh, little M10 bolts, 10 millimeter heads. And these just bolt in to the uh, mounting points that are TIG welded on the top here. Let me unwrap this thing real fast and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Here she is, all unwrapped in all her glory. Um, it's got some factory mounting points. Well, not factory. It mounts up to the radiator. I don't know if these are factory. I'm assuming they probably are. Came with some feet for these fans back here. I have a 14 and a 12 inch spall fan right now. So what I'm thinking or what I'm hoping to do, I should say, bolt this in with 112 and I'll see if I can modify it to fit the 14. I think there's a way. The, the 12 and the 14 on it right now fit exactly to the surface area that we have on the radiator so what we're going to do is we're going to pop one of these fans off actually you know what? we're going to pop both of these fans off and uh, we're going to take this thing outside we're going to pull the whole front end of the car back off again we have to drain our cooling system which we just bled and filled up but we're going to save our antifreeze we're going to filter it don't worry you guys that kind of warned me uh to reuse it or not reuse it it's 20 bucks i mean honestly I wouldn't mind buying new antifreeze every single time I dropped it if I had a million dollars in my back pocket. That stuff's expensive, guys. That stuff's $20 a gallon. And then you get the water wetter, which is like $12 a bottle. I got two bottles of that. I mean, it's like $40 worth of fluids. I just can't do it. So I'm going to drain this stuff safely into a bucket. And I'm going to put it back down here. And I obviously am going to filter it through something before I put it back in the car. Usually I just throw a big coffee filter inside of the uh, bleeder funnel and just pour the stuff back in and throw the filter out once I get it full. But uh, <laughs> anyways, we're gonna we're gonna take this stuff outside. We're gonna pull the front bumper off. We're gonna pull our intercooler off. Uh, we're gonna get the radiator out of there. Our fans disconnected. I'm gonna wire in some new plugs because these have these little spade connector ends and I don't like these. I have those weather pack connectors. So what I wanna do, first I wanna test one of these with the 12 volt system and just you know, see what it does because 
<clears throat> the small fans, those things rip. Those are the best fans I've used so far. Um, we're gonna slap this on the back side of the radiator, mount some good fans up to it. I actually have to pick up a piece of weather stripping because uh, what my plan is, is this edge right here, I want it to be a nice tight seal against the radiator. And right now it's a nice clean aluminum finish and there's nothing on it, no grease or nothing. So I think what I'm gonna get is some of the uh, like household door trim seal or door sill seal, you know, the stuff, the foam with the adhesive back that you can stick around your door in the winter time so the cold air doesn't come in. I think I'm gonna border it with that. This stuff's cheap. Heck, I might have some of it floating around down here. I'll have to take a look. Let's get outside in the dark, turn the lights on, and uh, start pulling pieces off. All right, boys. I've got the whole front end pulled off this thing yet again. I gotta clip a bunch of zip ties, drain the antifreeze out of this thing, and uh, yeah, that's where we're at. These clamps look terrible. They've rusted up. They're EMUSA or MUSA or MUSA, I don't know how to say it, but they rust so bad. I've basically replaced every single one of them except for like four. And uh, yeah, the ones up there, those look good. All the other ones that are up by the uh, throttle body, they look great, but anyways, it is time to lay down and unscrew this little drain in the bottom of the radiator right here. And we're gonna save all this coolant and all the good stuff that's in it. Hopefully it doesn't spray everywhere. We will see. Oh, she's gonna spray. All right, we're gonna drain this and save it. Put a little drain plug off to the side here and uh, once that's done, we're gonna pull our intercooler out. There's so much painting dust down here. I'm gonna clean all this stuff off too. I'm gonna get this clamp pulled here, disconnect the fans, unbolt this uh, manual boost controller right here, and we're gonna pull this radiator up and out of here. All right, boys, we've got this radiator pulled off of here, and this is a better look at a 12-inch spall fan and a 14-inch spall fan mounted against a Megan Racing radiator for a 2G DSM. It is doable. Mind you, we have the other one right there, the shroud of the new fans. I want to use this fan. I don't know if this one's going to work. This one pulls a lot of amps and it's already melted the plug off. I have a weather pack plug here on the 12 and the 14 melted and it killed it. And that was part of, part of my issue in the last episode. Uh, but either way, we we're still getting hot. So I think we're going to have to retire the 14. It does have some, uh, what is this, mylar or heat resistant pad that we picked up from AutoZone. It's a little barrier. Um, whatever we do, we're gonna have to use some more of this stuff because we're pretty close to the hot parts. And uh, I'm gonna snip this thing off of here. It's just held on by zip ties, mounted straight to the radiator. We're gonna shroud this thing off and I guess we're gonna see what happens here, guys. What I'm gonna do for right now, I only have one spall fan. I'm gonna use this fan right here coupled with one of those fans over there on the uh, new shroud. And we're gonna retire this for the time being. It did fit on here just barely, but the big thing I didn't like is that gap right there. You can actually see there's a space. It's about, I don't know, quarter, quarter to a half inch of space. So air is getting sucked around this instead of pulling straight through the radiator. It doesn't matter if I'm losing efficiency because the, the logs and the temps that I showed you guys I mean, they were spot on, so there's really nothing that I can worry about there. Um, I'm gonna pull the stuff off of this. I'm gonna pull these fans off here, and what we're gonna do is scrub this thing down, get it nice and clean again, and we're gonna try to basically fit this thing up, mount it up. Maybe I could find some, uh, some of that adhesive-backed foam stuff that I was talking about for going around your door sills and border it off, so I'm gonna take a look for that real fast, but I'll be right back, guys. We're gonna try to get this stuff set up tonight and get it ready for tomorrow. So during the daytime, I can show you guys the other part of this video and uh, another small modification that we're gonna make that you guys could probably do if you have a little tiny welder or some basic uh, metal cutting tools, angle grinder, etc., and a piece of sheet metal. Okay, boys, so there is something I have to share with you. And in the interest 
of being completely transparent here, you can see my pile of fans, all right? I'm gonna explain something here. Back a while ago when I started the channel, I endorsed these little butt connectors. They're heat shrink butt connectors that have a little bit of solder on the inside of them and these rubber bands that help you join wire ends right here uh, to other wire ends. Instead of like regular crimp connectors, there's solder on the inside of them and the solder melts and it fuses the wires together and all that fun. Um, those things are trash and I'm gonna go back and figure out which video I set it in and probably just delete the video or try to edit it out, re-upload, I don't know. But in the interest of transparency guys, this is the pigtail off of the 12-inch uh, spall fan that I thought was dead. All right, so that fan is right here. I thought that thing was toast. I thought it was cooked. I thought it was no bueno. It was done. It is not done. I retired the spall fan, which is $145 on summitracing.com for a 14-inch one that was $168, which is that one back there. Um, because of this little pigtail here, I had wrapped the uh, solder or heat shrink butt connector things with electrical tape when I put this little connection together before I bought weather pack connectors and made plugs and all that stuff. So what happens is these little connectors cannot withstand heat. So if there's solder on the center of them and heat shrink on the outside, so you, you crimp them on and you melt the solder and the heat shrink and the solder goes in between, they're like clear tubes. They cannot handle the temperatures that our DSMs make. And just, just go ahead and buy yourself one of these kits. I've been using these and albeit this kit is just like a cheap Amazon kit. It comes with, you know, the little pins right here. You get the male terminal, the female terminal. You get a single plug, a double plug, a triple, a quadruple, a six set and a five set. I mean, you can, or five pin, six pin, here it is. All this stuff right here. These work great. Uh, they work up to a certain you know, amperage. These 14 inch spell fans, <laughs> this thing completely melted the plug that I had on it. So I can't recommend it with that, but the 12 has been working fine. That's the 12 that was in the car. This is the 14 that was in the car. Problem solved. We're not gonna run the 14 anymore. We're gonna put this back on the shelf, maybe put it on classifieds or Amazon or eBay rather. I don't know what we're gonna do with that one. We'll save it for something. Well, maybe we have another vehicle in the works. Maybe there's another car coming to the channel soon that we're, we're gonna use that for. It's a great fan, can't complain. But anyways, the heat shrink connector, it's junk. Don't buy it. If it's a clear tube with little red or little black rings on the ends of the, the connector, the heat shrink connector, just don't buy it. Um, I've been looking through my little collection of stuff and I can't find one to show you guys. But steer clear, just go with connectors. Build yourself one of these things. I'll show you guys what it looks like to build one of these again, just so you guys can have some peace of mind here. If you have you know, some twisted wires like this, or you heat shrink connected them, it's not the way to go. Um, I apologize to those of you who have bought those things because uh, me saying they're good, they're just not. So anyways, great news. Uh, we have a whole plethora of fans down here now. And this is the 12 spall that I thought was dead that almost overheated the car because that stupid ass connector decided to uh, get really warm by the exhaust manifold or really warm next to the radiator. Basically the, the solder on the inside gets hot, liquefies again, and the wires pull back apart. So that's why they don't work well. I actually had the same type of connection hooked up to my, what was it? My ECU ground path. When I hooked up my wideband, I used one of those and for weeks, months actually i was having a problem where i would lose coolant temp i would lose map signal intake air temp all that all the the signals would just go like absolutely crazy in my ES ecm link logs like you'd be looking to be like a nice normal wave and then all of a sudden be like way high way low way high way low for like a split second these huge drastic changes and i chased it down to a bad ground path on i think it's pin 92 in the 2g where you, uh, if you, goes, you guys go back and watch the uh, ECM link and wideband install video, wherever I hook up the ground for those, I'm pretty sure it's pin 92 of the ECU. But I used one of those connectors and it was trash. So stay away from those. Do a right connection, solder it together, wrap it up, heat shrink it, whatever you guys gotta do. Don't use the heat shrink solder butt connector things from China. They, they just, they can't hold up to the heat. So um, 
But this right here, I wanted to do, I wanted to do a little demonstration for you guys on the difference between the cheap fans, the Amazon slash eBay fans, and the Spall fans. And right here, I have a 120 volt uh, plug charging 12 volt car whatever jump box. It's just a regular jump box. It's a 12 volt jump box. You can hook it up to your car. We're going to use this. And I want to show you what happens when you apply power to a Spall fan, an Amazon fan, which these little blue stickers are synonymous with the Amazon fans. I have two of them that I started with off Amazon. They were like 26 bucks. They did not cut it. They, they didn't move enough air and the car got hot. And then this is one off of our brand new shroud, which is down here. I pulled one of those off and we're going to compare this one to the Amazon fan. So this is an eBay 12 versus an Amazon 12. And if you look at these things, it's a blue positive, black negative wire. Um, they both have straight blades with, I wanna say like a seven or an eight millimeter little nut on the inside. This one is the same. It's got these little vents. This is actually Amazon, this is eBay. The eBay one, you can actually see these little windows here. This is like very cheaply molded, but there's a little weight right here. So a tiny little weight on the Amazon one. And these fans do not move the CFM that they claim. Um, if you buy them, beware, you might overheat your car, or if it's a hot, hot day, you may have an issue. So I wanna do a little demonstration using the jump pack, my 12 inch spall fan that I thought was dead. So this one here and this one here are gonna go back into that shroud. All of these are just extras. This one, this one, this one, and this one but I wanna show you guys the difference between them and how you can tell if you have a good fan to hook up to your DSM. Okay, so we've swapped the power right here to our jump pack over to our eBay fan. And the way you can tell these apart, again, is the blue sticker. I see these on a lot of guys' cars. I get a lot of you guys who submit photos of your, your builds or your projects, and I see these horrible fans in some of your photos, and I try to warn everybody that I can. I, I screwed up also. <laughs> telling you guys to use these fans i i don't know you live you learn that's all i can say so if you lost 40 bucks on buying a set of those fans i do apologize but spall all the way so anyways this fan is the ebay fan now watch this i'm gonna apply power right here just turn this little dial check it out you can see there's no torque this thing doesn't try to spin or try to turn on and off. You can hear it's it's really, really not powerful. It doesn't move a very big amount of air. I mean, just from the, the blade design, you can see these ones have like a really deep twist on the inside and it kind of levels out. So it starts really deep and kind of smooths out towards the edge. These things move a ton of air. This, on the other hand, no torque. Very slow spool up. They move some air. They don't get that loud. I can talk over this thing. I couldn't talk over the other one. Probably should demonstrate that too. But pay attention to the sound of this real fast. All right, now we're gonna move over to our Amazon fan from our eBay fan. And I have a feeling these are manufactured by somebody who builds these fans. They look, I mean, honestly, they look identical. All right, so we've switched over and we have our ground and power hooked up here. So it's the same thing. No torque, doesn't move a lot of air. Turns on, gets, it, it spins pretty quick, but I mean, I'm standing directly above it. It's barely moving air. I can still talk over this one. I feel like it's, I feel like it's identical. I feel like it's the same amount of power that this thing puts out. Let's jump back over to the spall one more time for a quick comparison so you guys can see. Hooked up again with the spall. Watch this. She jumps the second you give it power. But watch. It's pretty loud. I don't know if you guys can hear me any better. I'm talking the same amount of volume. And this thing is screaming. It's actually bringing air straight at me. And it needs some CFX. So if you couldn't hear that, this thing screams, it's torquey, it's got a great blade design, and it moves a lot of CFM. I highly, highly, highly recommend this. 
versus that or that. Sorry this is kind of dragging out, but I really thought you guys could use some of this information here. So let me put this mess of fans away. If you guys need a couple of fans or you need a single fan, reach out to me at todaysprojectguide at gmail.com. If you got some shipping money, I'll just send it out to you. Um, I don't want to make anything off these. These just came. I was in in this for the shroud. That's it. So reach out to me if you guys need it. Follow me on Instagram at Today's Project Guide. Um, if you need something, shoot me a message. I'll try to move some of these extra fans. The 14, I mean, maybe we can work on a price on that because that was expensive. But these other four, this one here, the two blue stickered ones, and the other one left in the shroud. I just, I don't need them. I don't think they're going to need to stick around here anymore and they're just taking up space. So let's keep moving this thing along and uh, get these things wired up. I'll show you guys how to put some weather pack connectors on the back of this. Okay, boys. So I'm going to show you how to hook up one of these weather pack connectors onto the back of your fans so you can unplug them and plug them back in. And we're going to use a two pin because we have a two wire fan. Um, blue is hot, black is gold ground uh what we're gonna do here is grab a female side which is this side here and it has the uh, retaining clip on it a little fastener the male side has the little stub end that locks into this plug when you put it together and you plug it in let me see if i can set this camera up and show you it plugs in just like this so this red end faces into the plug and this end right here will lock into it. You can see that little notch right there goes into this little spot here. And this is our little weather pack insulator. Keeps the dust, the water, all the crap out of it. So this red tab here is what locks in the pins. So what we're going to use is not this side, but we're going to use this side right here for our fan side. You can do it whatever way you want, but I like using this side. So what you do is you pick up two of the box ends right here. And you can see there's a little hole in the center. It's a little rectangle. And we're going to pick up two of these, set them off to the side. We're also going to get ourselves two little weather pack insulators. And there's just a ton of them in this kit. I think the kit was like 15 bucks. I'll link it in the description. Um, and you come over here to your fan. All right, so these things go on. So this little cone end is hanging off the other side here. So we're going to slide this onto the wire like that. So... I'm going to slide it over the wire, twist it on so that the copper part is sticking out and that you can see the blue sheath showing around the edge right here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but there's a little bit of blue poking out. We're going to do the same with the black wire. It's like a little cap that goes over it. Just twist it on in place, stretch it over. There, you can see there's a little bit of black showing right there out the end and there's our wire so then we're going to take our little connector here and this end it's got like a an opening right here these little wings we're going to fold these so that they grab onto the yellow part of the connector this little insulator and you're going to cut the wire so it fits underneath that rectangular opening here in this wire i think you can see what i'm talking about this one's way too long i cut this one down and we're going to take our little crimp tool and we're going to fold these little wings over onto the yellow insulator so that it's all held together first. So you just kind of grab it and roll one end under, get it nice and flat, and roll the other one over top of it. It doesn't take much to do this. Once you get it onto the yellow part, it's actually pretty easy. So you can crimp it on one way, just work your way back and forth until they overlap a little bit mess around with it and finesse it make it look good all right so that's the first part now that we've got this little connector hooked up to the yellow insulator the wire is just laying here in this little valley and there's two more little ears on the inside here i don't know if you guys hopefully you can see what i'm doing here we're going to crimp these tiny little ears over onto the wire strand itself so you just squeeze one side over and you got half of it there and you're going to overlap the other side on top of it I like to give it a little crimp right here with the end of these pliers. Squeeze it nice and tight. All right, one side right here is done. Now we're gonna let this sit, we're gonna do the other side. So first, we have to line this thing up. 
figure out how much length we actually need. It's quite an extra bit of wire right here. So we're gonna shave just a little bit of this off right quick. All right, there we go. So we're gonna do the same exact thing on this side. I'm gonna fold these big ears over. There we go. They're crimped together. Hopefully you guys can see this. We have two little ends here with a little insulator on them. And they're both facing the same direction. If you look, you can see the rectangles are identical on the left and the right. That's important. You don't want to have one 180 degrees out or 90 degrees out because you're going to have to twist the wire and line it up. So now what you do, take your female connector here. And we are going to slide each one of these pins in. Line them up nice and straight. We're going to slide these things in, and you'll feel when they roll into place, they'll actually slide all the way in. And when you get them square, all right, so you can see the metal is sticking out right here at the top. You can see the two little openings. We're going to take our little plastic clip, and slide it back into place here. It kind of slots inward. And if you push on the wire, push the body of the connector down, you can use your index finger and lock this thing right into place or your thumb takes a little bit of pressure you'll feel it snap right in and once she snaps <clears throat> she is all set I'm gonna move on to doing the other side in the car which is the same process you're just gonna use this plug and the wire slots in from this side here so that you can see the male pin sticking up on the inside of this red clip here and they just they lock into place so all right so if you have any trouble getting that red connector to lock in because these wires are kind of thicker than they should be you can buy different size connectors ones for a 14 gauge 16 18 i think these are for what 18 gauge so this wire on the left the ground side is a little thicker than the blue wire and they keep popping open on me just put the mail connector over top of it. It'll squeeze itself in so that once you pull it off, unhook that little hook there and yank it out. That red clip is nice and seated on the inside there. I don't know if you guys can see that. But anyways, ugh, they snap in nice. They're not going to come out and pick this thing up by this connector now. We're good. So we're going to stick this off to the side. We're by the bag of Doritos here. And we're going to start work on setting up our shroud. Okay, boys, so we have our shroud set up here. And if we go down to our radiator, you can see it lines up pretty good with the two holes down here in the Megan Racing radiator and up here in the top left and the top right. All the bolt holes line up. So this is up and down. We're gonna bring it over to the table. Now, I did look out. I did find some spare weather stripping insulation stuff that I had floating around. So brought that down here. Now to ensure that we have a good solid adhesion between these two parts what we're going to do is set this off to the side real fast we're going to flip it straight over and we are going to go ahead and clean this lip all the way around the ceiling surface here where we're going to put that foam with some isopropyl alcohol i have some 99 percent in that little spray bottle there i'm going to use a lint-free shop towel scrub this down real fast then we're going to apply that little i think it's like quarter inch or something like that this stuff right here and we're gonna seal this so that way when this goes against the radiator, there's no way the air can leak through the sides of it. All the air has to come through the face of the radiator, through the fans, and it's gonna help the efficiency of our cooling system. Foam is now mounted and it's all nice and stuck real good. Definitely use the alcohol, it helps a lot. And uh, have a little glass of alcohol while you're doing this because it just makes everything a little bit more fun and less tedious. So 
With that being said, we're gonna flip this thing over. We're gonna carefully lay it on its face as to not destroy our nice little seal. And if you look from the edge, you can see we have a nice little soft membrane here now, which can be tightened up against the radiator and it's gonna seal all the way around so that all the air has to be drawn through these holes where the fans are at. The feet pulled off of the other fans, so these are gonna slot into our expensive spall fans and our cheap fans can just sit on the shelf without them. So these just slide in. They don't fit as good as they could. They're extremely tight because that's just what you get when you buy a cheap fan or get gifted a fan set when you buy a $100 setup. But they do go in, a little persuasion. It's lined up right here, you can see. I'm gonna need both hands for this. I'm gonna have to push this in. We have four per fan, so we're gonna put one here, 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 and up here. So with a little bit of dead blow persuasion, you can get the cheap feet to line up in your spall fans. The only issue I'm finding is that the holes don't match up. The holes are just on the inside, which is fine because they're covered up with the feet right here. So if we line these up real nice and square, we can block off each one of the four fan holes, or the mount holes rather, that fit the cheap smaller fans. And if we center these, we can cover the existing holes, mark our spaces, and basically put a Sharpie dot in there and drill out the bolt holes for our better high flowing fans. Okay boys, we've got this thing all set up. The only thing that's left to do is put the plug back in this radiator here. So uh, we're gonna have to do that. We're gonna have to take this thing out. I'm gonna test these with 12 volt power and make sure that there's no weird noises or nothing's hitting anywhere or squeaking or anything. This, I don't think we're gonna have any issues. It all spins pretty freely if you grab it right here. <laughs> can't really reach into this one. I broke one of the uh, little spokes out here. Anyways, it's sealed up nice and tight. It's nice and flush. You can see the foam down in here. It's compressed. It's blocking extra airflow. And what we're gonna do is call it right there. We're gonna leave it until tomorrow morning. metal break. So it comes with a press plate. So if you were gonna bend this metal right here right now, it's very heavy, solid steel. So you just take your piece of metal, you mark it. And obviously we're gonna be doing a little bit of bending on these sheets and cutting them. You'd lay it in here, figure out what you wanna do, where you want your bend to be. You lay your press plate over the top of it, I believe. And then you just push on it with your hand as you pull this part up and it creates a nice bend on this little area right here. This would be a nice little fold up, whatever degree you want. So I have a degree wheel here. I'm gonna use that to help me uh, make some nicer looking uh, bends here. And I wanna bend this piece and this piece so that they're identical straight across. Cause I don't think one sheet is enough length to reach all the way across the bottom of that intercooler. And we're gonna make some modifications to that little air scoop that we put on before. So let's go outside and I can give you guys a better visual and show you what I plan on doing. All right, so when I initially put this thing on, it was just a piece of steel and it was sticking out below the bottom here. And it's not that great looking, it got bent up. Uh, I tried to I tried to make it so there's enough space for air to get through, but basically the back of this intercooler just sits on this curve. I can kind of stick a finger underneath it, but it only goes that far and then it's a pinch point. So we're not really getting much airflow from this. Now I'm gonna change this instead of having it curl down forward towards the bottom of the the bottom lip of the bumper here i'm just gonna have it stick straight down in the back at kind of a probably a 45 degree angle going up to the core support and it's gonna sit like if this is the bumper going across it's gonna stick out just a little bit below that and you won't be able to see it when you stand in front of the car 
It's not gonna be hanging out, touching the ground. It's not gonna be some gaudy giant piece of metal sticking down. It's just gonna be poking out just a little bit to scoop a little bit of air that's going under the vehicle and shoot it up underneath and into the radiator and AC core stack here. So that's what I wanna do with this. That's gonna be the last thing that I mess with as far as the cooling system goes. And I'll do some more data logging and try to give you guys a good comparison. Here we are. This is that piece of metal I was talking about. And it is just junk. It rusted really, really fast. So this is coming completely off. Um, this is my little ghetto rigged uh, power steering cooler thing that I did. It was bolted across the front face here so the intercooler wouldn't sit there. So I broke the bracket off, cut it, and then flipped it around the backside here and just attached it with some zip ties around a cloth so it wouldn't rub through the metal. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna mess with that today. I probably should. But you can now see the uh, AC condenser, she wiggling. The mounts on the bottom here have moved. So I didn't notice that before. But I'm gonna cut this piece of metal off. There's just a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little tacks on there. I'm gonna drill those out or buzz them out with my little uh, cutoff discs. Take this out so we can move this line up out of the way. We're gonna get this piece of steel out of here. And then what we're gonna do is kind of follow a similar path with this. We're gonna go, instead of having this giant curve right here at the bottom, uh, we're gonna go straight down out the bottom of the bumper. So the air is gonna hit this edge and be forced up. I think we're going to give it a bath, degrease it, blow it out, remove this metal, and uh, yeah, let's, let's just do it. I got this thing all cut back off. This is rust stains. I'm gonna clean all this with a wire wheel and we're gonna make it look good again. The edges right here, this is the metal I pulled off. I had a piece of angle iron supporting the intercooler in this very thin metal. So I'm gonna clean this area off real fast. I also fixed this foot here. These are held on with seven mils. So you just loosen them, twist the foot, plant it down. They have like a little slot right here so you can kind of slide the, the bracket down and raise the condenser core up. Everything's looking good so far. I gotta clean this up real fast and take some measurements and I will see you guys downstairs so we can start building this thing out. All right, boys, I've got all of the old crap cleaned off the front of that car. I cleaned off the uh, rusty parts of the paint and all that. Now what I'm gonna do, I went outside and I measured this piece of steel up against the front of the opening there where the, uh, the intercooler sets. And what I'm gonna do is measure to these black marks and then make a line straight across this and I'm gonna give it a little bend. I'm thinking, I don't want it to be too deep. I don't want it to be a 90 degree, like a straight L shape. I want it to come down just a bit, bend forward just a bit and that's where it's gonna stop. I'll probably put a bend from, from vertical, a 45, and then maybe like another 10 degrees below that kind of make like a, a scoop so the air can get scooped up in there. And that's as far as I'm gonna go. So I'm gonna stick you guys off to the side and start work on this. So here's what I've come up with. This is gonna be the bottom lip. This is two pieces of 24 or 22 gauge, something like that. It's relatively thin and lightweight. Um, I've got these nice little light bends in it. You kind of see it's got a nice straight bend here and a little one at the top. And the idea here is this top part is gonna to go to the core support and stick forward. It's not very tall. And it's gonna act as like a scoop. It's gonna hit air here and send it right up to the radiator. And this is gonna be sticking out about that far underneath our front mount intercooler. And it's not gonna grab a whole ton of air. It's gonna have the bottom of the bumper in its way still, but about that much of it's gonna stick out. And 55 or 65 miles an hour on the highway, 
having that little bit of lip sticking out to scoop some extra air is always going to be helpful. What I planned on doing initially was, these are obviously two of these side by side is just too long. So what I'm going to do just for the interest of keeping this thing rigid is I'm going to overlap them. I'm going to mark it where it fits uh, in the space that I have. And then I'm going to tack weld on the back side these pieces together in a couple of spots. I'll probably punch some holes in it just so I can weld through it all. And this whole piece right here is going to go outside to the car. I'll drill a couple of holes in probably two spots across it. And I'm just going to do little tacks to hold this thing on. I don't want it to move. I was going to try to, to drill out some holes and put some rib nuts in or something. But uh, I don't have a very good rib nut gun. I tried using it the other night again. And I couldn't get the, the fittings to compress correctly because the gun was flexing. So, or the hand tool rather. So what we're going to do is just tack it into place. It's going to be nice and strong. It's going to be real rigid. I may have to add a piece of uh, metal behind it to, to support it so the wind doesn't push it back. But I don't know, overlapped. I don't think this is going to move once it's in place. So it's pretty strong stuff. So I'm going to take this outside market and come back down and start putting this thing together. So here is the front of the car. It's all sanded down, all ground out. A little surface rust that was there is gone. What I'm gonna try to do here is fit this just like so. And I'm gonna drill a couple of holes across the, uh, let's see if I can point and hold, this top edge right here. And we're going to tack weld this into place. And it's pretty straight, it just sticks down and this is you know, missing the L bracket that was there before from that angle iron. And I'm hoping that this is gonna act as an air scoop and direct more air up and in behind the intercooler on top of using the shroud. So anyways, no more talking. Let's go do some drilling, bring the welder out here, get this stuff all cleaned up and painted first. And uh, we'll, we'll tack it all into place because obviously we're not gonna be able to paint anything behind it. But this is definitely a lot neater than the last one that I did. Pretty dark out here, as you could probably tell. I think the moon's over there somewhere. Yeah, it's behind those clouds. This is what I got. Got this nice little panel here with a fat thumbprint on it because I'm impatient and I don't want to wait for the paint to dry. So I have to scuff some of it off anyways and touch it back up. I painted all this stuff in here. It's all unrusted and rust converter painted and all that fun stuff. So this fits on like so. Nice and flat. So what I'm gonna do is clean off a couple of spots where I can tack this thing in. It's gonna sit just like this. I've already slapped the intercooler up in front of it and it sticks out just enough, exactly what I want. And I'm gonna leave this thing here, button some welds into this, put all these little holes right here. You can kind of see them, bunch of little holes. I'm gonna do a bunch of really small tacks. I just want this thing to be on here and be secure. I don't want the wind to catch it and bend it or flex it. It's it's pretty rigid. I don't think that's gonna happen. I just don't want it to move. So it's gonna get welded. It's not gonna be bolted in. got this thing all bolted into place and welded into place and all that stuff. It really doesn't look bad at all. It looks like a little scooper. I like it a lot. So now what I have to do is plug in these fans in the back here. I just pulled the wiring out and put a new weather pack connector on because now we're going to run the 12 inch ball fan instead of the 14 and the 14 melted this thing last time. So 
I'm gonna grab all the stuff, start bringing it out here, slap the radiator back in, the new shroud, plug everything back into place. I have to take care of this, insulate it a little bit so it doesn't get hurt, doesn't get rubbed on, and we're gonna go from there. I've got our little homemade tray down here. You can kind of see it right there. And it's sticking out about I don't know, three inches or so underneath the intercooler. That's exactly what I wanted. But the main part, let me show you, is there's space back here. I'm gonna slip my hand back behind it. And this thing is gonna catch air. It's in there nice and solid. She's not moving. Oh, stand up and show you also. We have our shroud hooked up. It's kind of tight right here. Not really a big fan of that, but the heat shield is gonna block it and there is some mylar pad in the way of burning up the motor here, so it's a pro. Now I just gotta slap the front bumper on this thing, see what it looks like, and I'm hoping that this metal right here will stick out the bottom just a touch. Pretty laid out here. We got all this stuff put back together. It took quite a while, not gonna lie. I was out here for about six hours or so total today going through everything, pulling it all apart, slapping it all back together, just trying to make it all work. So what we have down here, we have our new fan shroud hooked up. Everything is all wired up. Everything is all fastened back to where it should be. I'm refilling the coolant right now. I got it filtering through a towel and that piece that we built, you guys can kind of see it right here, sticks out, sticks out about two inches underneath the bumper here. So the idea is that the air is gonna hit this bumper, it's gonna go under and then it's gonna run right into that piece and get sucked right up behind the intercooler and it's gonna promote airflow. She's pretty solid. It's got a very light, light amount of play, about an eighth of an inch if I push on it real hard. Probably can't see that on the screen. That's all right though. I uh, definitely am sick and tired of being out here tonight. <laughs> there is a million bugs out here just blowing by my face every two seconds. Um, yeah, and those of you who have, uh, paid attention in this last hour-long video, I really don't know how long this is going to be, I'm going to edit forever, probably could tell, straight through that hole is an air filter, and that's my cold air intake, so, I think we're all set up, guys, I will definitely keep you all posted, I will let you know if I see any changes, right now I'm getting between, let's see, what was it, 186 and 193, maximum on a hot day so far it was 203 on the highway with the ac running so we'll do a test with the ac on and with the ac off and i will post my results asap so you guys can all figure out if you want to try to do something like this for your your 2g if you're having issues with the uh, cooling system uh, i'm super excited to see what happens with our uh, fan shroud hooked up i definitely think that's going to improve stuff i can't lie i'm most excited about that um, we're also going to keep a close eye on that little piece of metal underneath, make sure that it catches all the air, it doesn't have any issues, and it doesn't bend. I'll post like a short or something like that so that you guys can see that stuff. Um, yeah, sorry, got bugs all over my face, they're just, they're just driving me nuts right now. Almost feels like I'm in Australia. Uh, so guys, it's been a long one, sorry it took so long to get to this point bug just flew down my throat uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop right here but if you guys have any questions or any criticisms or suggestions even drop them down in the comments below make sure to check out today's projectguided.com if you guys want to pick up some merch some stickers some shirts uh, all that stuff helps support the channel further we bought some more tools with the money that we got off of that website right there and put another video together because of it so all that stuff helps provide more content for your viewing pleasure, and hopefully you guys found this entertaining or informative to some degree. Regardless, thank you very much for sticking around and watching this whole thing. Oh my god, the bugs are just terrible. Alright guys, I'm going to call it a night. Thank you very much for watching. You guys take care. We'll see you right back here next time. Have fun. Keep cool.